Hello, my name is Darren Thomas, and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be learning about gradient boosting with Python with a focus on classification. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. Now, when we're talking about gradient boosting, gradient is a fancy word for slope. You know, you learned about slope in high school, you know, when you're graphing plots and everything. And gradient is just kind of like sometimes there's more than two dimensions. That's kind of what maybe the term is more commonly used. And so we're going to be learning about boosting in the context of, you know, the gradient. And so this is similar to what we've discussed with add a boost, but it's a, it's a different approach in terms that it's using optimization and other things of that nature to try to find, you know, we call them like the little, the little valleys inside the data when you map it. We're not going to get into the mathematics too much. Uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on using this in the context of a course classification. So we're going to go through the four steps here, data preparation, data preparation, base, uh, making a baseline decision tree, hyperparameter tuning, and of course gradient boosting model development. That's kind of going to be our goal here. So. <clears throat> What we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, make some predictions about cancer diagnosis, if you will. That's going to be our focus. And in this first little line of code right here, we have the, the various modules that we're going to be using. So of course, we're going to have the gradient boosting classifier. You can see that for yourself right here. No secret there. And of course, we're going to be making decision trees. We got to do our grid search because we have to do some hyperparameter tuning. We're going to be using NumPy and our data is going to come from Pi data set, pandas, of course, and then these last two down here are, are going to help us with our uh, k-fold cross-validation to try to st strengthen our prediction. Now, for the actual data preparation, it's really simple because this really isn't our focus. We're just going to drill down here and remove some blanks. That's about it. I need to do that. So we're going to go ahead and put this here. And so let me go back up here and make sure I ran this. Looks like I did, but I'll just check. All right, there we go. And so now in this particular cell of code, we're just dropping the NAs from our, our cancer data set. And line two, we have all of our independent variables here, weight loss, time, their gender, stuff about their cal how many calories they're eating. And last here is their status, alive or dead, basically. And you can check the... Uh, the meaning of the various variables if you want to. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is make our baseline model. So we're doing a decision tree here. Now, I left this code in here because copy and pasting can sometimes mess up the white space, but essentially in line number one here, we're uh, setting up our cross-validation, a, uh, a tenfold split. We're gonna shuffle things and the random state is basically our, our seed number, setting the seed. And then we're gonna have our little for loop here for depth with a range of one to 10. So this is referring to our max depth here. And the depth is like how far down the decision tree will go to help to clarify that. So we're gonna use our, our tree classifier here. That's the name of our object we're gonna make. And then inside that, we're gonna have our decision tree. Max depth is gonna be set to what we to up here, one through 10. So a depth of one, a depth of two, a depth of three, all the way up to nine, I believe and then a random state of one so for setting the seed. If the max depth is less than depth, so like if it's five, you know, because the max is 10, obviously, if it's less than that, you're going to break and print a score. And so everything's already set up here. Let's see if this will run. And you can see the numbers right there. So when the depth is one, you can see that here's our accuracy, if you will. And after that, as the depth increases, we get less and less accurate. Now for our hyperparameter tuning, we have to, of course, look at the number of estimators. That's how many trees you create. The learning rate, that's about how, how fast it kind of goes through the gradients, if you will. Subsample, the amount of you know, samples you take, and the max depth. We already kind of talked about that previously. So I'm gonna show you the code for this. This is not as sensitive to, wait a minute. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and paste that in here for you. So here we go. 
let's see if this will work all right great it's done and if you really want to check so let me just show you what I did first I made a instance of the gradient boosting classifier in line number two this is where I start searching my grid so the number of estimators how many decision trees I have three different values 500 1000 and 2000 I just picked these there's no real signs behind them and you would adjust them as appropriate their learning rate is going to have three different values you can see those right here excuse me then the max depth is going to be from one three to five and then our subsample I use half the data 75% of it and then all of it and our random state I just set that to one every single time and then of course I search my grid here and you get the output down below so you can see that this doesn't really mean anything to us but we're going to use this in another piece of code in a second now the next part is where things get really really slow at least uh, with Python in this particular setup I have to run the analysis and it's really slow but fortunately I just happen to know the actual numbers that I'm going to get to save time otherwise we'll be here forever so <clears throat> the best we can do is 74 percent in terms of accuracy and I will show you what values to set the algorithm to right here when we make our gradient boosting model so here based on the output the computer is going to recommend that the number of estimators be 2,000 so 2,000 trees the learning rate should be 0 0.01 the subsample should be 0 0.75 the depth should be 5 and of course the, ran the random state or the seed number should be 1 and so again this gets kind of slow here but when you run that you get the actual results which will be exactly similar to what we found when we ran the uh, the, the example up here and so again <clears throat> Um, despite the, the slowness of this calculation, you can see that with the gradient boosting, we were able to improve things from 74% when our best example originally was 72% with a max depth of essentially, you know, one. And so by tuning these hyperparameters here, number of estimators, the learning rate, the max depth, etc., and the subsample, and using the um, gradient boosting algorithm, we were able to improve the performance. And that is the power and the benefit of using gradient boosting. Some people say that it's better than add a boost. I mean, we'll leave that discussion up to you. It really de de depends on the context. Uh, it's commonly associated with classification, but it can be used with other algorithms. So I'm going to review what we discussed here and conclude this video. So in this video, we took a look at how to use gradient boosting. Gradient boosting is another one of those te ensemble techniques that can be used to improve the predictive power of your particular model that you're working on. And so how it works is, is that you are using the gradient, which has to do with multidimensional modeling and trying to get through the, the maximum and the minimum value values, etc., to try to find a place where you are able to reduce the error as much as possible. And so in our example, we looked at how we can improve the prediction of predicting cancer status. That's what we were looking at. So you have to start by making your baseline model because you can't tell us something is better unless it's being compared to some other model. So that's what we did here. Then we tune our hyperparameters. And so we had to predict the number of estimators, the learning rate, the max depth, the subsample, etc. And then after that, we ran those through our model here. And trust me, there, there's an answer for that, 74%. When you do the calculation, you'll find that yourself. And based on these recommendations, we were able to tune these hyperparameters in this actual model right here and get the same results. So that's the power of gradient boosting. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for watching and take care.